This is probably one of the more interesting minivans you will find in the world. I was just going to talk about the first generation, which is this, that ran from 1990 to 1999. It was first introduced in 1990 and only had one sliding door for the rear passengers. It also featured a unique mid-engine platform where the inline four-cylinder gasoline-powered engine was installed in an almost flat 75 degree angle beneath the front seats. And all the engine driven accessories such as the alternator, power steering pump, air conditioning compressor, and radiator fan were all accessible from the front hood. This first generation of Previa was available in both a rear wheel and a all wheel drive version and powered by 135 horsepower in a four cylinder 2.4 liter fuel injected engine and it came equipped with a four-speed automatic or a five-speed manual gearbox. This particular van has quad seating, that is, two independently swiveling captain's chairs in the passenger area. The Previa was imported from Japan to compete with the Dodge Caravan minivan. It replaced the Toyota van, but it did not acquire significant market share from Chrysler due to its higher price. This particular van cost $26,000 when it was brand new. This is very much like a Honda Element. The seats in the rear fold up, of course. The Honda Element doesn't have three rows of seating, but it does have this nifty feature that seems maybe Toyota was the originator. Of course, with a minivan, you have plenty of space to carry things. This is a three row seater. You can sit six people in here. But for me, I don't really carry people in the rear, so why would I want three rows? And the answer is storage and camping. This makes a great camper. And when you look at the Honda Element, it's got one of the features that's very interesting for the SUV. That is, you can lay these seats absolutely flat into a bed. So if you're camping, this makes a great vehicle. You push this down, and now you have a very flat surface. This also comes down. Now this comes up and you have these little legs here. You put them down. Then you have this rope. You put it in here. The rear seats also recline. And now you have plenty of space. It's got a sliding door on this right side, but not a sliding door on the left side. And of course you have two captain's chairs back here. The cool thing about these particular captain's chairs is that they rotate and it's very comfortable here. So you have a button right here, you push it, then you rotate. And now you can sit backwards. And why would anybody want a rotating seat in the rear? You know, for me, it's camping. And if I take this van out camping, it is nice to kind of rotate your seat around and have more space, more empty space. It is kind of nice when you're chilling out and camping, you can sit like this out the door and maybe have a barbecue, do whatever, read a book. You also have a cup holder here that's pretty intricately designed in these captain chairs. All the rage nowadays is these camper vans and people forget this 1994 Toyota Previa that they are really excellent camper vans. They're is even a version that's got four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive and there is another version that's supercharged this one is the rear-wheel drive version the interior's got plenty of space and having these captain's chairs really add a lot of comfort these chairs are extremely good shape not, there's not been a lot of action back here and i know that the previous owner did a little bit of camping with it but not much. One of the interesting features about this, it's got heating and AC, but it's got separate heating and AC for the passengers independently. So you can control it right here and it blows out of here. But of course, this was used to haul probably children around the, uh, you know, to school and back. So maybe they had that in mind, but now in the secondhand market, a lot of people are getting these as as camping vehicles because they realize it's a Toyota it's very inexpensive these days also it's kind of like at a slant even though it's like an egg shape it's slightly higher up 
in the rear and it makes it much easier to look over the seats and the heads of the people in the front and look what's happening in the front windscreen. So that's a very good, comfortable thing for most people. If you've ever been behind, it's very difficult to see over the driver and the passenger. So this is kind of a nice feature that it's slightly higher up in the rear than in the front. I think if I was to make this a camper van, I'd probably remove one of these seats and probably put a single bed over here. That way I still could hang out here in the rear seat and you know, just relax a little bit while I'm camping out in Utah or New Mexico. Inside the Privia, you're gonna find that it's a very comfortable van. You sit higher up, almost like an SUV type of seating position, but you have so much more visibility. This windscreen is incredibly large and you just have so much space in here. So you have your AC, which is very easy to reach. And then you have your tape deck and radio. And I'm kind of glad that the previous owner didn't replace it because I think a lot of people now are nostalgic for these old tape decks. So this has got a tape deck. And look at this, it's got an extra pocket over here. So it's very easy to put your phone here and it's not gonna go away. You also have your cup holder, which is a little dirty, and your cigarette lighter. You have an ashtray that's never been smoked this. This was a very expensive van in its day. 1994, this thing cost $26,000. It's a 94 and it's got 223,000 miles, which is a testament to the Toyota quality. I just don't see a lot of American vans of this age running around with 200,000 miles. I, I barely see any like Dodge Caravans around from this age. It's a very sought after vehicle. The one downside about this thing is that it's pretty old, 90s, and of course, it is harder to service than most vans, I believe. They also get 20 miles to the gallon, so not great mileage. Also, one of the things I like is this big flat space here where is the airbag, because you can use a laptop there. So you can use this as almost as a home office. Like the cloths and everything are in amazing shape. This was very well taken care of. The things that you need to reach. And it kind of makes sense to have all of this stuff easily accessible instead of having the engine. But if you ever need to do any engine work, it's very complex and very difficult because the engine needs to be dropped down. The windshield wipers is that they're integrated into the wiper itself. So it sprays out of the wiper. You can see the hose going through here and then it sprays it right onto the windshield. A hatch, a little thing here, and it lifts the rear seat or lifts the driver's seat. And you have the ability to check your oil and everything and access the front, the top of your engine through here. So you can actually tell it's pretty warm here where the engine is. So it's a very weird kind of mid-engine system. It is very unique and I don't think I've ever seen a minivan or a car that looks quite as cyberpunk as this. Even with Elon Musk's Cybertruck, he should take cues from this van. It looks more cyberpunk than the Cybertruck does. There's plenty of vents everywhere. It's got a tape deck, the heat works, the AC doesn't blow as cold as it should, but it's a van from the 1990s. So it does have the shifter knob up in the steering wheel. You also have the handbrake right here on the left. That makes room for the middle to be free so you can go from the front seats to the rear. Look at the shape of this door. Pretty interesting shape. You never see this in a minivan. relatively good mileage for something of this size it's just uh, one of these things that you always have to fix these old vehicles but I didn't realize that these Previas were so sought after there are a couple of versions of the Previa this is a 94 Previa two-wheel drive 
So it does not have a lot of the things that people like about it. So there is a more sought after Previa, which is a supercharged Previa that's four wheel drive, which is very rare to get. But those things cost upwards of like $10,000. This one, you can get pretty good deals on these things and I believe they'll get, you can get one of these for about $3,000. And if you find a good deal, Perhaps you can get it for $2,000, maybe $2,500. If I was to say that I bought a vehicle that's mid-engine and rear-wheel drive, you would think automatically, oh, he bought a sports car. If you've ever driven a minivan, it feels like there's a lot more weight up top. This one, all the weight is down here. Like the engine is down here and you can feel it getting warmer too. So it's a very interesting engine to put in a minivan. And I wonder what Toyota was thinking about because the front engine vehicles are much more popular. At least they're easier to make these days, I think. It just drives so smooth. And the weight is just so much lower than a regular minivan. Having the weight down low to the ground is probably one of the better handling things that you could do. And you can tell, even when you're going around corners, that this thing behaves a lot more different than a Toyota Sienna, for example. And it makes a, a great camper. I mean, if you want to transverse the continent, and maybe just the US, and go to Alaska, this might be a great van for it. Now, this is a two-wheel drive version with a four-cylinder engine. They make a supercharged, oh, speed camera. They make a supercharged minivan Previa, and they even have a five-speed version of the Previa that's very rare. They also have an all-wheel drive version. So what people tend to do is look for a supercharged all-wheel drive Previa, and if you can find that, man, that would make a killer killer van for camping and driving to Prudhoe Bay in Alaska. Now I am thinking about going there and I was like, oh, maybe I'm gonna like ride my motorcycle there, but I've ridden my motorcycle across the US several times. So I'm thinking, you know what, maybe I'll take my scooter and I'll get like a van and I'll just kind of like trailer, trailer it along. And the ones I'm, I was looking at were minivans like the Honda Odyssey and the Toyota Sienna. And it never occurred to me that there is another van that's way cooler. And that's right, this thing is way cooler than the Sienna and Odyssey. It's got a mid-engine. How cool is that? But yeah, that's the Toyota Previa, guys. It's a sought-after minivan. And I never even realized it. So much space in there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.